Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. It is freezing outside, so I have my sweater poncho on. Uh, but I'm really excited to talk to you today about Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is the most pleasant reading surprise I have had in recent memory. I don't quite know what I was expecting. I thought that maybe this book would be kind of cute because there's rabbits on the cover. It is not. It is not a cute book. The best way I can think of to describe it is that it's like a Greek epic but with British rabbits as the characters. <laughs> and actually, in the introduction to the book, the author says that he had a hard time getting Watership Down published because publishers would give him the feedback that children aren't going to like this book because the themes are too sophisticated and dark and the writing is too complex and tweens and teens aren't going to like this book because the main characters are rabbits and that's babyish. Fortunately, a small British publisher did pick up the book and as it turns out, if the book is well done, people are happy to read about rabbits. The pacing in this book is pretty different from a lot of modern stories. So most modern stories follow the pattern that a lot of us learned in school where you have exposition, rising action, a turning point, falling action, and a resolution where the plot is kind of on this steady march ramping up and then there's a big turning point and then there's kind of a, a trickle off into, into the ending. And Watership Down is more, more episodic. It kind of follows like a sinusoid. And it reminds me a lot of Beowulf. In Beowulf, there's three main events, like there's three peak actions, and then there's tangents about history and mythology of the society. And uh, Watership Down actually does that too. The rabbits have their own shared mythology, and that was one of my favorite parts of the book. During what the rabbits call owl time, when the owls are out at night, they burrow underground and they'll tell stories about this big, uh, this myth mythological chief rabbit called El Ara Ra. I think I said that right. And El Ara Ra is like the chief rabbit of all chief rabbits, and he's kind of a trickster figure, which is a virtue that is extolled by rabbits to be furtive and fast and sneak into gardens, that sort of thing. And I love that there's this theme of leadership that is displayed in the stories about El Ara Ra, the mythical chief rabbit. And it's echoed in one of the main characters who ends up serving in a role as chief rabbit. He starts off kind of a very insignificant uh, person in his community. He is not in any sort of leadership role. He does make some mistakes, but overall, it's really interesting to see his journey into becoming this wise leader that serves uh, serves his community very well. And the last theme I wanted to mention is this exploration of what what is home? What does it mean to have a home that is successful? So at first the rabbits are literally just trying to find a place to live. They're on a epic journey from their homeland trying to find a new place. And the struggle then starts to morph into not so much literally just having a place to exist, into struggling to create a community that you want to leave behind as a legacy uh, and what what does that look like so those are my thoughts on watership down by richard adams if you have read this book please leave your thoughts down below if you haven't i would definitely encourage you to pick it up it's one of those few books that i would just generally recommend it to most people it's around i would say middle grades early young adult level but it's completely void of common ya and middle grades tropes so it reads like kind of it's just kind of a refreshing little read about rabbits. I upload on Fridays and Sundays and I will see you in the next one.